Hello, everybody. My name is David Monias. Uh, I'll be one of your, your today's hosts. Uh, I'll be cooking with you. And one of our recipes today will be pickerel burgers. Um, but before that, I do want to introduce my co-host today. And you are? Spotlight's on you. Hi. I'm Karen. I'm one of the grandmothers at FNFAO, and I'm really happy to be part of the Food as Medicine workshop. And my favorite, one of my favorites, we're cooking fish today. So, yay. We want to acknowledge um, where the fish has come from, the contribution that our office had received. And uh, I'll speak a little bit more about it and um, how fish helps our, our beings on all levels. But I, I just wanted to start by giving thanks for the contribution of the fish that we received. Awesome. Well, with that said, uh, we can get started on our recipe today. And I'm going to switch over to the overhead camera. Uh, you may have, you should have received uh, some baby potatoes. I do understand some folks are ahead of us. Uh, and what we're going to do today, we're just going to grab a whole bunch of them and we're going to cook them up to the size that we have for our families and we're gonna chop them up. We will wash them after. Uh, I'm just gonna give them a quick rinse after they're kind of get there. Uh, it's gonna rinse off some of that starch and kind of get a nice and ready. But for the most part, I'm just gonna start cutting them now. I do have a smaller knife that I'm gonna use for this. Actually, I have a different knife. That'll be so much better for myself. And it is this one, I believe. Awesome. And we have a nice knife, it's meant for cutting potatoes. And we're just gonna cut these into little halves or even quarters even, this way that they cut quite easy. And we're just gonna do that. We don't even have to keep our hands close to it, so we have to be careful. Just kind of nice little cut there, bam, right there. And then you can follow along as you need to. Please cook the amount, appropriate amount for your families or whoever's in the household today. And we're just gonna kind of get those going. And it's nice and lovely. These are gonna taste so wonderful. Isn't that right, Karen? That's for sure. And while, while you're cutting, make sure your oven is preheating to 350. You can get a baking sheet ready with some foil on it. I believe there was foil provided in your package. That helps cleanup be a little bit easier. Yes. Cleanup is quite a hassle sometimes. I'm going to get a taller table. <laughs> I'm so tall that I'm like kind of like crouching a little bit. I know, right? I'm so used to having like uh, the one at home where it's kind of like up here almost. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has that problem. Might just be a tall guy problem. Maybe I should just get a chair for here. And we're just almost about done with our potatoes here on my side. And like I said, oh, that's my oven preheating. That is one heck of a alarm. So actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a nice close up for you. I'm gonna bring up one of these potatoes. So the reason why we're actually actually kind of be kind of washing them is I don't know if you can see that well on your cameras. It might be buffering, it might be not. But we actually kind of noticed quite a bit of dirt. Um, and that can be kind of a challenge. And obviously we don't want to be eating dirt. And then it's not going to be a too much of an issue. So we're going to wash them off. And we're just going to make sure none of that kind of sticks around. Um, and, and if you're wondering why we're keeping the, the skin on as well, um, I do have to mention that, I, in my opinion, I really think a lot of the nutrients sticks around in the, the skin here. And it's not as bad as you think it is. Um, even if you go to the places like the keg, they actually keep their skins on for their mashed potatoes. We're not going to be mashing them today. You could if you like. But I'm just going to kind of keep them like this, nice and soft. And then you're going to have to excuse me while I disappear to go wash them. Uh, and yeah. Karen, if you have any things to chime in, I would do it now. That's perfect. And one other thing about um, keeping the skin on the potatoes, like David said, with the 
nutrients, um, it also adds extra fiber. Um, and fiber helps to keep our bodies healthy, keeps everything flowing in a really good way. And you know, it adds a little extra crunch too if, if you're able to crisp the skin up a little. And uh, yeah, I just find them to be really, uh, really yummy. And you can get the red ones, the white ones. There's even, I saw a purple one the other day at the store, purple baby potato. I haven't tried those yet. And I am done. And I'm just gonna get these ready. I do have, <laughs> which is really funny. I have a big pot today. I'm not nearly gonna fill that as much. Um, we are actually gonna, maybe I won't do it. I'm gonna say, make my, save myself some time just cause we did start late today. And I'm just gonna actually put them on the bottom. And from what I understand from our recipe today, we are gonna need some oil, which I have somewhere here in our office. Excuse me, that's one thing I didn't have completely ready. And there you go, and I got it. And we're just gonna put a little bit of some of the oil at the bottom here. Just kind of give it that nice, so they don't stick. And what we're gonna do, oh, thank you, cameraman. Whew. I don't know if anybody saw that, but I caught that minute. I'm so sad. Anyways, what we're gonna do, we're gonna throw some of this in there, put a nice in there. Maybe I should have put some more, uh, but you know what, we're gonna work with what we got. Please be careful. We don't wanna ruin any pots. If you have cookie sheets, this is a great time to use them. And I'm just gonna mix them around, just kind of make sure that oil kind of gets a little bit of everywhere, right? And what I'm actually gonna actually include, I'm hoping that's the right orientation for you. Uh, is some seasoning salt, which is one of my favorites. And how we're gonna do it today, I'm actually gonna season them to my taste. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit around. I'm not gonna overload it, but I'm just gonna make sure it gets on there. And I'm again, I'm just gonna put that stuff in here and we're gonna start the oven or stick them in the oven. And it should be fine. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Maybe a little bit more. And we're just gonna stick them in the oven for quite a bit of time. And we're just gonna make sure they have that nice flavor to it. And what's nice is that the seasoning salt that we provided does have a blend of different salts and spices. Uh, it may not be as up to your seasonings like. If you prefer things like lots of garlic. If you still have garlic from when we use some from previous classes, this would be a great addition. As well as like, so like our previous class where we had carrots, it's okay if you have used them already, this would have been a great time to put them in. But it is what it is. And I'm just gonna cover these guys. And I'm gonna stick them in our oven. Ooh, maybe I'm gonna have to switch. Now it's gonna be a technical difficulty on my side. <laughs> You're gonna have to give me one second. Our oven is not prepared for this. I'm gonna have to use one other, one other, which one was it? This, this one? Well, while Dave is adjusting the um, oven, you know, the, those are some of the things that you run into when you're, when you're practicing and you're doing something new. So I'm really glad that uh, David can um, work on the fly and is super flexible because we want to recognize that we're not professionals. This is a project that we've taken on that we're really excited about <laughs> and we really love doing. And just so that you know that uh, um, we're all home cooks, we're not master chefs and learning together and having this community time is our main focus and being able to connect. Correct. And then that's one thing too, I actually have a background in uh, working with community. And one of my most favorite things has been always connecting with the families that we work with and just trying something different. I think it, I always like to think it increases engagement between us, builds that rapport and just kind of overall kind of like brings up the level of work that we do. And I'm just going to give my 
cutting board, a quick rinse, and we can get straight onto our fish today. Actually, yeah, we're gonna get straight onto our fish. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna clean up my kitchen space here so it's not so messy on the camera. Just gonna put that there, that there. And we're gonna pull out a knife. And it can be something simple as this, which is kind of just like a normal paring knife at home. I have used that for the last time we cooked fish. But today I'm gonna to try something a little bit different. This isn't exactly like a knife designed for cutting fish, but it should work fine. And it should kind of give you, give us that whole way. And then the one thing I'm gonna say is that cutting fish is kind of difficult. So the fillets that we provided today, they're actually, um, they actually still have some of the skin on it. So, but further ado, we are gonna try that again. I'm gonna teach you that trick that I've taught in previous classes is we're gonna cut at, not like this, oh, sorry, but kind of at a diagonal and we're gonna kind of cut it like this. And we're gonna do that right up here. See that part right there? We're gonna get a, make a nice incision right there. And then do, oh, this is a very <laughs> sharp knife. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna have to be very careful, get in there and get that nice little kind of piece there. Uh, what you're going to see is actually kind of fold, folds back up and we're going to kind of just take it along and we're going to kind of bring it back on in. Instead of going this way, we're going to come this way and we're going to kind of glide it under between the meat and our, our skin here. And we're just going to kind of hold on to this part and we're just going to pull it on. and hopefully it kind of just goes through. You can pull it and cut, it should just glide right through. And if you really want, so I did have a little bit of some leftovers there. That is unfortunate. I'm gonna make sure I kind of recycle that properly because I do like to kind of be conscious of the kind of stuff that we have around here. And what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna cut them into like maybe threes, just so they kind of fry in a good shape. They do kind of fall apart when they're that big. And we're just gonna put those off to the side. And just to be conscious in case other people are having issues, we're gonna do once more before moving on. Hey. Does anybody have any questions before I get started on round two? No, I think we're good. Okay, awesome. And then one thing I do wanna also mention, these shouldn't have any bones but I would just run your finger through them and see if you can find them. They should have been processed so that there isn't. There is kind of like little lines that you can see. And if you're able to, I would pull them out now. Like I found this really tiny bit. And we just don't want those parts in our, our meal here, right? But for the most part, this fish is pretty okay. So I'm just gonna do that again. We're kind of, oh, wrong knife. I'm just gonna put this one away. Apologies. And we're gonna use the small paring knife just in case people are just like, wow, he has a fancy knife. I don't have that. I'm just gonna make that incision, like I said, this way. And we're just gonna make it this way. And we're just gonna try that once again. That's nice. And now that I kind of have a grip there. Oh, it's coming off a little bit, but that's okay. We'll use that for a little bits after. And you can just bring it on through. And keep in mind, when we are working with raw meat or anything like that, sometimes we do kind of get splashes here. You're gonna actually gonna see me, I'm gonna be cleaning this off screen just so I can use the space once more. But we're just gonna, again, chop this into threes and kind of have that going. And I'm gonna quickly wash my hands. Cause again, as when we work with raw fish or anything like that, it's always good to be conscious of the germs that we're spreading onto our surfaces here. And I'm just gonna do a quick rinse. Ideally, it should be more than, I believe it's like two, 60 seconds, but I'm just gonna do a faster rinse here and make sure I'm very thorough. We're working with meat. And I'm 
just going to put off our fish off to the side here so we don't have to worry about it later. And you want to switch back to Karen for a moment while I clean the table. So while David's setting up for our, our crumbing the fish, I just want to talk a little bit about where the fish had come from. And uh, our office was very fortunate to receive a donation of pickerel fillets that had come from our local fishermen in Manitoba and had been processed. It, I believe it was intended for, for sale. However, with COVID, they weren't able to sell it, to take it to market as they expected. So rather than allowing it to go to waste, they were able to process it and donate it to the communities. And I know of many elders and families and community programs that had received this beautiful, bountiful gift of fish. And because it comes from our local waters, um, the waters that our ancestors have grown up around and lived around and harvested from, it's even more meaningful for our beings on all levels in that it nourishes our mind, our bodies, our emotions and our spirit. And so this, this fish is really special and that our, our community members have harvested it and then we've been able to receive it and then share it with the community. So mm -hmm. miigwech for that fish that water is life. Exactly. And I'm just gonna bring it up again one more. We did provide some bottles of oil, or if you have some at home, I'm just gonna switch over to our oven here. And I'm just gonna start the, the oven on a very low heat because I, I am gonna leave it unattended for a short moment. And I don't really like doing that. So I'm just gonna be conscious about that. And we're just gonna use a generous amount of oil here, enough to kind of like get the fillets a little bit going here and we're just going to keep that low if there is multiple people in the household i would encourage one of those folks to watch it and yeah and we can get started on breading our fish so oh i guess i didn't need to my bad um so i'm just going to pour some of this this is our breadcrumbs for today some people might have gotten this brand some people may have not uh, it is okay, it's gonna be different. If you prefer to be a little bit more uh, traditional sake, you could use flour. It is really optional. I'm just gonna mix a little bit of both today. Just so we can get that nice fluffiness. Again, the, the flour was optional. I'm just gonna throw a little bit of that in there just to kind of get that next level. And we're just gonna mix that up and maybe I'll put a little bit more of the breadcrumbs. Nice, generous amount there. And before I get started on anything, has it, does anybody have any questions? I just wanna be conscious in case folks are needing any extra support or if I lost anybody. I think we're good. Any thumbs up in the chat, the groups? Sorry, can you just like repeat that one more time in regards to what goes in the bowl? Okay, so we're gonna go back once more. Uh, we are gonna be using our breadcrumbs here today, right? Uh, I'm just gonna pour a generous amount because we are gonna be cooking quite a bit and it's nice and uh, fluffy in there. This is the other option is that I also put some, if you wanna be traditional and you don't want to use a lot of breadcrumbs, we could also use some flour I am just adding a little bit today. It is, it is very much optional, right? And I just want to encourage people to improvise when they can, but realistically, this is the main ingredient we're going to be using today. And if you don't have uh, flour, that's okay. I have done this recipe a few times um, just with flour and just with breaded crumbs, right? Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you so much for speaking up. And I'm just gonna crack these eggs here. Oh, and you're gonna to have to be careful and mindful of uh, just some of the eggshells. Make sure we don't want those in there, right? And I'm just gonna use three for now. And I'll add more 
two should be sufficient. And I know you guys will be cooking a lot more than I will be. So I'm gonna rinse my fingers real quick just because I did get some yolk on them. And I'm gonna pull out one of my forks or a spoon even. And we're just gonna kind of beat those eggs. Make sure they're kind of mixed. So it's almost kind of like we're making scrambled eggs. If you have a whisk or a fork, this will be even easier. Or we're just gonna mix them on, on up and hope that's getting into the camera. And that looks great. I'm just gonna put that spoon away. Oop, sorry for the loud noise. I don't need to spook anybody. And I think what I'm gonna do is probably put these guys away. And we're gonna get started on breading our fish. So Karen actually has a good tip for about, um, oh, actually, I just see that we have a nice little alert on there. So, uh, we actually have a hashtag so you can share your pictures or your Instagram worthy photos. And um, that is hashtag food as medicine. And it's exactly how it's written right here. And uh, you can either tag or myself, uh, whether that mean you have me added, uh, have me added on Facebook through my work Facebook, or just tag our various social media pages, which is Twitter at we have our Twitter handle, we have our Facebook, and our Instagram. So do share to one of those, and we would love to showcase some of your food. It really does help show our funders the awesome meals that we've been making together. And yeah, and I just love seeing them. And we're just going to get started back onto this. And I am going to start with some eggs. So we're going to get it nice and eggy, and we're going to mix them right in here. And we're going to really just cake it on in. And if you can keep one hand clean, that'd be a really good idea. And we're just gonna mix it in there. You can even, if you really wanted to, you can add another layer and get back in there or make it nice and crunchy. And I'm gonna do two fillets for now because Karen has taught me a really valuable teaching about fish and she can share it right now. When you're frying fish, you want to do one batch at a time so David has uh, the two pieces that he's going to fry at once. And if he were to add a third one partway through the cooking, that would mean the other two would get a little bit soggy. So one of my grandmother mentors who taught us how to fry fish in the middle of the bush, that was her trick. <laughs> to nice. Do a batch at a time. Okay. And we're going to switch on over to our oven here. here. And one thing I always like to actually encourage people to do, especially if they're not cooking with a lot of the elements here, is always have the handle off to the side here because you don't want any little ones to kind of splash or knock them over or anything like that, or even your shirt or your sweater. And now that I have this nice and fixed up there, we're gonna throw that in. Oh, that's not sizzling like I would like to. That's okay. We're just gonna make sure we turn up that heat a little bit. I'm gonna put it on uh the meat. Hello, do you have any feedback? No, no, I, fin I finished cooking. So awesome. Could I see them? Can we I'm only on your page? I would love to see you how they're going or now that they're done. Little pickle burgers. Ooh, oh. that looks lovely, man. Oh, your camera's yeah, freezing. I'm at 1% <laughs> my food. Hey, thank oh, you yeah. for the cooking class. I'll see you next week. I'm only Can you weekend, so gotta... inbox us hey, a photo? You. Yeah, inbox us hey, a photo. Sure. I would love to see them after. Hey, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. I love it. great. And we're just going to take a moment while my oil heats up a little bit more. And if you're like me and you didn't have it as hot as you would like it, that's okay. Now that we're kind of going, they're only going to get better each time that we add another filet. And we're just going to have it nice. And Karen, do you, 
we are going to be kind of in kind of a mode where we kind of relax while we wait for our food, uh, our food to cook. <laughs> uh, Karen, did you have any more uh, special teachings for us today? Or any other things that we should be conscious about while cooking? Uh, one of the other teachings that um, I had received and I hadn't shared before was uh, my grandmother, after I had my daughter, had told me that um, after giving birth, you're not supposed to eat fish that swim fast. So like the jackfish or, you know, uh, she said that that was um, something that could increase the blood flow. Um, and they suggested the, the ones that are slow on the bottom of the lake, like the sturgeon, they kind of just lurk that that fish is okay to eat uh, but something like our jackfish um, what do they call that northern pike is that what they they call it in in the books and our walleye or pickerel were off limits and salmon oh that's quite i've never heard of that before and i'm glad i'm so happy that you're able to share that today and while we're waiting maybe we could mix up the coleslaw Oh, that's a wonderful idea. I'm, I completely forgot. Thank you so much. That's why we have, that's why we tag team today. Actually, I'm just going to throw it in this big pot that I have over here. And again, I do want to remind people that I am kind of being mindful of the space and making sure our kicking area is all clean. So if you are able to, and maybe in a home kitchen, you wouldn't be cooking on the same surfaces that you had the fish on. Otherwise, you would just wipe it down like I did earlier. And with like that said, we're going to get our coleslaw ready today. You can either eat it separately or you can add it into your fish burger. I am going to add it into my fish burger because I just love the veggies that we have in here. I'm just going to throw quite a bit in here. And we actually have dressing that goes with it today. And that is our coleslaw dressing. You can see that here, it's craft style. Honestly, you could use a little bit of anything you like. And I'm just going to make sure this opens correctly. I'm going to make sure it's open. Sorry, that is something I should have had done in prep. But like Karen said, we aren't professionals and we we're just looking to connect with our families here and just add that next level of connection, right? And with that said, we're just going to throw that on there and kind of just add it. I'm just gonna add a generous amount, just throw it in there. That looks like a good amount for me today. And I'm just gonna bring that up closer. I'm not sure if you can get a good camera of that, but that's okay. You can just wanna kind of drizzle it all in there. You could have it very cakey if you like. Uh, I like mine a little bit more, uh, not as generous. And we're just gonna mix it up together. You could mix it with your hands. I'm just going to be conscious about that today. Probably not do as much. As you can see, I did actually add a, under not as much as I'd like to. So I'm just going to be a little bit more generous this time. <laughs> I actually thought that was going to be a lot more, but it's okay that it isn't. And we're just going to mix it up. And we can also stick this in the fridge if you want. I, it will kind of give it that nice kind of like um, chilled just like how we had, like if we got received it from the store or even from a, a restaurant. And I kind of want to add a little bit more, so I'm going to do that. Does everybody here like coleslaw? Do people prefer other sides? I know when I go to Chicken Delight, I actually ask for gravy instead of coleslaw. <laughs> And that's okay if you're like in that boat too. That looks great. How's the fish doing? Uh, it's still coming along. What was Maybe the I tool? Need to turn mine up a little bit more. What was the tool that went in the um, in the bags this week? Ooh, great segue. Um, I have it here somewhere. This week we're offering up. A 
tongue. This will be great for handling the fish today. Uh, we want to start including maybe some little little trinkets because I know not everybody has just stuff around the house. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's fine whether or not. But I do like the idea of like including um, just brand new sets for you. Just kind of a little reminder and token of our like just that you appreciate we appreciating you being here today. And with that said, let's switch over to our fish. Let's double check them. Maybe my my fish, my oil is warm now. And then it's a little bit cooking. It's going a little bit slow, but that's okay. I'm just gonna turn up my heat quite a bit more. And I'm just gonna flip them on over mine. And if it does come off, that's okay. We're just gonna put them back on. And we're just gonna keep it at that. I'm just gonna put those there. And I do gotta ask here, one second, while I refer to my, make sure I'm keeping track of the time correctly for our roasted potatoes. And they should be ready quite soon. I'm just gonna turn up my heat a little bit more. So maybe while we're waiting on the fish, I'll go through our participants and get an idea of where everybody's at. So I think that's a great Jen, idea. Jen, your family is the first one um, on my screen. How is it going? Oh, I have Marie showing up. Marie, how's it going? It's going good. Um, I got my fish cooking or uh, frying in the oven and I've got my little potatoes in the oven and my coleslaw is made and it's already, in, it's in the, it's in the fridge right now. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Who's looking up there? Good. Oh, looking good. Yeah. Yours is looking better than mine right now, at least. <laughs> nice. Thanks, Marie. You're welcome. Who's, that, who's next? Oh, there's Jen. How's it going, Jen? We're getting an update on how you're progressing with the cook along. It's going good. My fish is on the stove and my potatoes are in the oven. Excellent. Awesome. And then we have Lillian. How's it going? Hi. Um, good. I just forgot to cover the potatoes, so I'm going to do that right away. But that's the fish I have so far. Wow. Um, wow, and I'm just looks yummy. I'm the coleslaw right now. Okay, and if you didn't cover them, they'll just take a little bit longer to cook, but otherwise it's, it's totally cool. Yeah, mine's going to be in the same boat today. Hi, Felicia. <laughs> okay. How's it going, Felicia? Um, Felicia. You, are you, you're showing us? Yeah, um, okay, here's my fish. Ooh. Ooh. That's lovely. Um, my potatoes will be done. They probably oh. are. They look great. Yeah. And my coleslaw is in the fridge. Mm hmm Going good. Right on. I'm making my kids hot dogs because they don't like fish, so. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. So yeah, so almost time to eat. Nice. For you, right? <laughs> Hello. Lovely. Rachel, how are you doing? Um, good. I'm kind of solo tonight. Kip played oh. a singing lesson, so she's she'll be up in a little bit, but I'll show you guys is our progress. That's our fish. Ooh. Cool. It kind of fell apart the second part. Our piece, I should say. There's our potatoes. I don't know if you guys can see them. Mm -hmm. yeah, they look great. <laughs> and then we've got our salad over here, or our coleslaw, I should say. Yum. Awesome. Mm, so, looks great. Looks great. That's us. Okay. Who? Oh, thank you. Who else have we got? Valencia. Hi. How's it going? I'm doing good. Just following up, following directions, and um, I got the potatoes in the oven, the fish in the fryer. 
uh, fall on a stove. <laughs> right, you you have an air fryer. So yeah, that's how I would have done the potatoes. Yeah, yeah. excellent. I, I tried the um, stove pop frying one time and I, I really screwed it up. <laughs> Sorry, messed it up. No worries. So we'll oh. look forward to seeing the finished product. And Thank then I know. think I think we have Cassidy. Cassidy, are you there? How's it going? Hello. Hi. Hello. Karen? Yes. Okay. Oh my goodness. I'm tired. Yeah, that's you, baby. And um, I'm sawing the fish. The fish was frozen, you guys. Oh. So I'm, oh no. I'm putting mine in hot water. And um, my son, he says, I want to say hi to the fishies. <laughs> you know, the bay. Yeah. Yes, oh, he said hi to the fishies, right? Okay, you say hi. Well, I'm sorry about having the fish frozen and, and the delay for your family, but I'm, I'm glad you figured out how to do that. He's mm -hmm. eating coleslaw, and I'm going to put the potatoes in, and the fishies are thawing out in the sink in warm water. Awesome. Excellent. There's an also a nice alternative for that, too. Um, if you have access to a microwave, uh, usually most of them have a defrost option. So it'll kind of be like, usually up here, this time we have it on mine here as time defrost. So usually you just click that, put it on for three to five minutes. You'll probably need a lot more than I did or there, depending on how frost, frosted they are. Uh, but that usually kind of helps them look quite a bit and make them a lot more easy to work with. And, and really Seth, I just it. cut them in pieces. Is that how you make the burger? Yes, correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. The nice thing about, I'm going to switch to the overhead here. So the nice thing about these burgers is that they're about the same size as these buns. And that's why I was cutting them in the threes, just so they can kind of fit on there quite easily. And yeah, and we're going to switch over to our overhead. I mean, not our overhead, our oven cam. Just because mine are about to be finished, this first round here, and they're nice and crispy as you can kind of see, and they're nice and crinkly, and we can just take them off the other now. We're just going to put them off to the side, and do feel free to fish out some of the, the breadcrumbs. Uh, just kind of keeps our oil clean. I'm just going to add one more set here and we're going to, we're going to finish it off for tonight and we're going to plate our food. So again, yolk and lots of breadcrumbs, keep them, mix them all in, get it nice and crummy and a nice and yummy. We're just going to do that. And as you can have different levels of um, crumbs or even just like how breaded you like them. I know some people even do it kind of without the crumbs or even without the flour. And we're just gonna make sure it's on there and we're gonna double coat it. And by the time these are done, they're gonna be nice and yummy. Just gonna throw those out there and we're doing them fast again. We're just gonna add some more if we need to and just get it really on in there. Just like massage that stuff in there. <laughs> And I'm just going to do that one more time. Just kind of get that in there. I'm going to get great. the glass on. And it'll taste pretty great after. But I'm glad to see, for the most part, uh, folks are getting along. And hopefully, the instructions were fairly clear once we were kind of going through them. So if anybody's behind, they, they'll still be able to eat them and kind of eat. We also did provide some. Um, recipes, a recipe book. So that was already pre-printed out. And yeah. And so I'm well, the, well, the next batch of um, 
fish is frying, I want to just uh, open it up and invite um, a surprise guest. Uh, Cora, if you wanted to say a few words, I want to welcome you and thank you for joining us. And if you'd rather not, that's okay too. Well, now that you've put me on the spot, <laughs> just joking, I was just trying to um, come on and check it out. I um, already made supper a little early tonight and I didn't have any fish. So I just thought I would tune in and see how it's going. And I wanted to see how everyone was preparing their food and, you know, sharing and I'm, I'm like, re I'm really impressed. I think that this is really great. And it, it just seems like so much fun. So I'm going to be sure to participate next week. And uh, it's so, so nice to see all of our families here uh, spending this time together on Wednesdays. And, uh, and yeah, even maybe I might even get to come in and be a helper to David one evening. So Ooh, I'm going to try and factor that in. And uh, yeah, I think it, this looks great. And, and um, I know that we have funding to be able to do this for the next few weeks, but I think that it's, it's something that we should invest in always. So um, I just wanted to say a quick hi to you all and I hope you enjoy your suppers tonight. And um, thank you for letting me share a little bit of time with you tonight, miigwech. Miigwech. Thanks so much. We're really happy that you you dropped by. I know you're a very busy person. Um, and this has been a really wonderful experience for, for David, for me. It, it's really um, been a, a wonderful surprise addition. Are you ready to plate, David? It looks fantastic. Yes, I'm just about finishing up here. Just grabbing a spatula or something else just to make sure I don't do anything silly, like hurt myself. Because mine is quite hot. And I'm just gonna put these off to the side. It won't be as beautiful as some of the families here. So give me a second while I plate it and make it look nice and Instagram worthy. But these look yummy. And yours will probably look better. I, I, I like I said, um, I wasn't able to kind of cover mine just because we did have to add some flexibility there. But again, it is what it is. And there's only happy mistakes around here. And I'm just going to throw that there, throw these off to the side for now. I'm going to plate one of these guys with some coleslaw that we prepared. I did refrigerate mine, like I mentioned earlier. Just to kind of give it that nice chilling. We're just going to put it that on the bottom one, or it could be the top. It doesn't really matter. It's really up to your preference. But one of my fish burgers right here. Yum. Push it up. And I'm going to do the same with our second bun here. Just going to put some more coleslaw here. Just put it on from the side here. Put that up front, put my nice crispy fish burger. I'm gonna actually even munch out on this one. Yum. Mm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Looks fantastic. So again, everybody make sure that you send us photos however you're comfortable. Some of you have been texting to me or inboxing uh, on Facebook Messenger. Uh, you can post to social media. The, the information is there. Twitter, FNFAOMB. Facebook is First Nations Family Advocate. Instagram is FNFAO. And of course, the hashtag food as medicine. Mm -hmm. Those looks yummy. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to turn off your ovens, folks. <laughs> and double check your oil everything like that mine are looking nice and crunchy with the way wow. i like it Ooh, i like them this dark oh <laughs> that was nice great crunch. Mm. i'm looking forward to having those 
<laughs> and with that said today, we are just about wrapping up on time. And like I said, please do share your food with us. Oh, we're going to do it this way, I guess. And again, use the hashtag food as medicine. I know it's little, little stuff, but do include it. I am very looking forward to see your Instagram worthy photos. And yeah, I really hope you guys have a nice even evening. I'm your host, David Monias. Uh, and then that is Karen Swain over there. And we're going to be signing off for today. And I really hope you have a nice meal. Do check in with us if you need any extra support or anything like that. We always have lots of programs going on here at the office here. We have uh, women's sharing circles, traditional parenting, living free, quite a lot of programs. And we, any of our wellness mentors or any of our advocates are happy to connect to you. We'll be happy to connect you to any programs that you guys need. Or and just want. one last thing, make sure you renew your interest if you want to participate again with us next week. We haven't set the recipe yet and we'll announce that shortly. Um, and then the other thing, we're starting uh, beading as medicine tomorrow. So I believe there are still a few spaces available. So contact our office or inbox me or call the office. <laughs> if you want to join in, it's going to be really fun. We're going to make a nice dangly pair of earrings. Ooh, and I'm lovely. even going to learn finally. I'm going to tune in for that one because that's, that's really awesome. <laughs> And with that said, have a nice evening, guys. Hope to see you guys next week. And good night, everyone. Lunches.